Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Dr. Chad Gardner as our speaker tonight, as he will discuss 3D printing permanent restorations in office. Dr. Gardner is a family dentist in Louisiana who specializes in implants, smile makeovers, and oral sedation. Before we get started, we have a few reminders for you. At any point during tonight's webinar, please feel free to add any questions into the Q&A. We will answer them live at the end of the presentation. And Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending tonight's presentation live or on demand. Dr. Gardner, welcome. Thanks for being with us tonight. We're looking Thank forward you. to it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, hopefully I can teach you how to produce some definitive restorations with these toys that we have. I think the technology has finally gotten to that point. Uh, so I want to talk about how to produce definitive fixed restorations with your 3D printer for all practice types. Uh, a little bit about me. I graduated in 2005 from LSU during the golden age of, of dentistry, the smile makeover uh, age. So my daughter, Tori, she's 18. My son, Preston, 14. And we live here in Northeast Louisiana. Little small town, Bastard, Louisiana. Uh, bought a practice here two weeks after I graduated. Jumped in, sink or swim, and bought it, and based everything off of a large paper mill that was here. There were over 3,000 employed by the mill. The insurance was a $2,500 a year max, no predeterminations. The median household income was anywhere from $61 to $70,000, depending on what statistic you look at. Uh, it was a great time. We were booming. Uh, 2008 recession, we never felt it. Uh, we were doing small makeovers left and right, uh, all on sixes and or, uh, implant retained dentures, I guess you'd say it. Um, a lot of locators and whatnot, big dentistry. Um, people didn't want to use plastic toilet paper, so thought the paper mill was going to be there forever. So the recession didn't affect us until 2011 and they closed the mill, shut everything down and all of a sudden the median household income fell to $22,988 below the poverty level and everything just kind of changed. So I had to change my practice or move. So that's where I feel like I'm somewhat qualified with this as I feel like I've lived two different uh, styles of dentistry, a uh, high-end crown and bridge and implants and whatnot down to uh, having to change everything to meet my patient base's income level. Um, uh, I mean, I, and the reason that I had to stay was one week before they closed the mill, I had just got done my ribbon cutting on this brand new building, 4,000 square foot building. I didn't see the mill closing coming. It was a, quite a shock. But um, I'm just an average dentist. I'd say below average to average artistic skills. I often use the lab to make up for my lack of artistic ability. But as we all know, lab bills have gone up and up and up and up. And I started looking for new ways to lower my overhead and still deliver quality dentistry. So I'll touch on a few uh, ways of how 3D printing fixed restorations can benefit all practice types from high-end practices to PPO or Medicaid practices and everything in between, and then go into more detail about the nuances of this, this new resin. Um, how each practice type can, can profit, cosmetic dentistry or full mouth rehabilitations, speed kills. These on her teeth, they're uh, 3D printed, that she was scanned, and the next day she had the uh, something to look at, a preview. If you give someone a preview within 72 hours, the case acceptance is astronomical. I have some statistics I've been documenting for the last seven years or so that I've been using uh, from a moon ray all the way up now to the Form 3B, uh, having someone design and, and, and send me cases. If you can get them a preview in there fast, you're gonna sell that case. It does not have to be perfect by any means. You just give them a preview fast and stress to them that the finals will be so much better. Uh, my numbers show over a 98% acceptance rate with cases 
by $12,500 or more. The next type of practice uh, or the next way you can use it, long-term temporaries. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than PMMA. It can be considered permanent. Uh, it's easier alternative to direct injection uh, resin cases or for stepping uh, a full mouth rehabilitation case. Even with when combined with ortho, we're doing here in the, the lower right hand corner here. Uh, he's been in these for about four months now. He had ortho for two and a half years and you know we're, we're stepping him and gums are staying great. Everything's doing great. We're getting ready to convert him over to, to mostly Emax. I think there's a zirconia bridge in there. But, uh, and there's a young lady, same thing. Uh, she needed to spread the money out, or spread the, the, the cost out. And so we, I had to design, design these and I printed them and put them on and she loves them. And we're doing, we've restored the front four so far. And every month or so she comes and gets a couple more done. Uh, this has been the biggest surprise to me what I'm calling indirect direct veneers. Don't sweat over the for hours doing subpar directs again over the top of patients. You're sitting over the top of them. You're, you're adding resin. It's, is it wide enough? Is it too wide? Or, it, do my tents look good? Do I need tents? Uh, you know, does a patient care? I, it's so much easier to do it this way. You're making 3D printing the, the veneers, then delivering them. I charge a, a direct fee. But uh, the way I do it is I, I'll gently pack like a triple zero cord, flatten the anatomy of the tooth, roughen the, the teeth slightly, scan, send the STL to my designer, sometimes to design myself, and deliver the next day. Now, I'll go into more detail about that later. Um, often no anesthetic used at the, the ginger, if the gingiva allows for cord packing without any pain. Topical 4% lidocaine helps a lot. Um, for busy offices uh, like mine, I do this at the consultation. It takes 30 to 40 minutes at the most for the cord, uh, slightly prepping the teeth to scan the teeth, <clears throat> and then 20 to 30 minutes the next day to bond them up. Um, or sometimes attempt cement them, depending on what we're trying to do. Uh, my auxiliaries handle the printing and the post-processing. We do this if the patient is ready to pay. We want to strike while the iron's hot. We want to get those things in there and get them done. How well do they fit? There's a little video of a bridge the young lady showed at the beginning. Another video here of a crown. As you can see, they fit. There's no over milling. Uh, you can run about a 50 to 80 micron spacer gap. 70 to 80 micron seems to be ideal in my experience. I've done right, just short of a thousand of these restorations, inlays, onlays, crowns. And 70 to 80 microns seems to be ideal for crowns. Um, and also I have to note that this, uh, this fixed partial denture right here is not an indication of the material. Uh, we just wanted to test it. She was informed about it and she was okay with it. And it's been in there since early November. So, and doing good. Like I said, we restored the front four and we're just kind of working our way back. Um, again, the indirect, direct veneers. This is actually the case that got me started on. Everybody gets that patient that comes in on Wednesday at four o'clock and, and, you know, you got to make my teeth look good now, Doc. You got to do it now. Well, that's what happened with this lady, sweet lady. Her daughter was getting married that Saturday. She had a rehearsal uh, supper and everything for Friday and all this stuff to plan. <clears throat> and literally four o'clock Wednesday, she comes in and asks me to make her smile look good for wedding photos. And I said, ma'am, I, I can't. I, 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 there's no way I have time to do this with my schedule. And then I, it dawned on me. I said, go grab the Sarah. I grab the Sarah. I, Prep the teeth back a little bit, scanned her in, and I told her to come back in the morning at eight o'clock. I can't promise you anything. We'll see what happens. I designed them, hit print, went home, and next morning she came in at 8 a.m. 
I already had them post processed. We bought them in, and she loves them. Um, she has referred and no less than 20 or 30 patients in my practice, and that seems to be growing with this. It's my number one source of cosmetic referrals. Surprisingly, it's a lot of professionals. It's RNs, uh, physicians, attorneys, uh, large business owners, that sort of thing, wanting this type of dentistry, not looking for Emacs or, or uh, ceramic smile makeovers. So that's the case of a young lady we did not long ago. Um, actually, no, we did hers a while back, excuse me, but uh, the most common things that I hear, I don't want to cut my teeth down. I don't want to spend $25,000. It's probably how the wealthy business owners stay wealthy. Um, or I just want my teeth to look good and I, I don't want, I don't have time for a bunch of appointments. That's the one that I hear the most time. It's always time with the professional crowd, physicians, nurses, uh, uh, a chiropractor recently, that sort of thing. And I said, you know, hand me the scanner. I'll see you in the morning. And we prep the teeth. Uh, I charge for a direct veneer. Uh, if you're one of those guys that uses, you know, 18 shades of resin and have those kind of skills, then charge whatever you would charge and cut it back and, and use it as a, as a scaffold. Uh, why? You really only have to isolate it one time and don't have that patient fatigue. You're not sitting there. You know, when you're doing direct veneers, you can sense that patient's kind of getting tired, that they're just scraping with that 12 blade and trying to get that embrasure just right. You don't have that huffing and puffing. They come in and you just bond them right on. Uh, this case was done. Yeah, this case was an old case. Uh, I'd actually done with the Bigo resin when it first came out on a moon rate in August of 2020. And we did this case in 24 hours and it's still going strong at five months. I believe this is my oldest case or second oldest case. A question that I get from other dentists, do patients know that they're being experimented on? Uh, my letter of consent states, I do not know the longevity of this or any other dental restorative material as home care is a major factor. It's a relatively new material in the United States, but simulated long-term studies are extremely promising. Um, and I can provide you with some links to those studies if you'd like at the end. Uh, we're doing the veneers as a smile fast, uh, as a fast smile enhancement with minimal to no tooth reduction per their request and much reduced fee at a much, much reduced time and fees versus tr traditional ceramic veneers. Longevity could be increased by a full wax up, evaluation of multiple temporaries, et cetera, but still no dental restorative material is permanent. I stress that to patients all the time. And in my opinion, these patients are no more being experimented on than when any new material comes to market, whether it's a, a, a resin ceramic hybrid milled materials or conia, press ceramic, milled ceramic. Uh, it's simply doing direct resins outside of the mouth. You're taking them out, out of the mouth, less chance of contamination, easier to work with it, um, and then easier to isolate, in my opinion, and you eliminate that patient fatigue. That's the biggest thing. Um, how each, pra each different uh, practice type can profit for PPO, Medicaid type practices, this is a case that's kind of near and dear to my heart. I, I saw this young lady uh, about three weeks ago and took the second photo, sweet girl. And as it says there, a high net alternative to removable for cash strap PPO patients or Medicaid patients. Patchwork dentistry and neglect. She was 18 years old, beautiful young lady. It left her self-conscious during those difficult adolescent years. She actually ran away from home after her previous dentist recommended extraction of 7 through 10 and an acrylic removable part. She had decay back behind those resins near the pulp. And I said, well, let's try this. And Louisiana's Medicaid fees, and of course, this is all state dependent. Her case came to about $5,100 for four root canals on 7 through 10, uh, six anterior resin crowns, and then four direct resins on the facials and four whizzies and nitrous. Uh, prep, scan, filling, 60 minutes. Uh, root canal, seven through 10, and then some cavity to seal it, about another hour. And 
Now, one assistant helped me while the other one designed, printed, and processed the crowns. Uh, while she was doing all the work with the crowns in the lab, I did a CERAC crown on another patient, did delivered uh, an immediate upper, complete upper denture, 11 extracts, checked several hygiene patients. By 11.20, they were ready to deliver. And we delivered them, took no time at all. And then we took the whizzes out and we were actually done before noon. I mean, we, we left at 11.50 that day. And, you know, before lunch production was $9,200, stress-free. And our overhead for all of this, you know, the denture, I want to say was $327. The resident we had tied up in the crowns right here, yeah, $30 maybe, much less than that probably. Um, so overhead less than 500 bucks, $9,200 of stress-free dentistry before lunch. Our initial consult was on September 28th, and we did the case on uh, October 2nd. This is right after I'd received the beta testing resin and the bill plate from Form Labs. Um, sweet girl, she, she made homecoming for it. She came in and brought me a big uh, painting she had drawn and whatnot and was all excited and... Uh, but I just wanted to throw her in there and just show the, the durability of the crowns. I know this isn't a three year uh, follow up, but you know, for three months, I think they look very good considering her oral hygiene has not improved drastically. Uh, and I will say too that my sister that that designed these crowns, she was a former lab tech, and she's she's pretty good with X Pen, so she was able to throw that together. Uh, again, back to how they fit. Here's a preview of InLab, which is where I like to design. Here's the mill preview. This is actually my tooth. I've got a, a crown on uh, tooth number 14. Here's the mill preview. Here is the 3D printed preview. It's just like a press serrate. Uh, yeah, this was at 70 microns, and mill was at 80 microns, which is actually pretty tight. If you have Average or below average artistic abilities, let the software do the work. There's a lot of them. Um, if you'd rather deliver permanent direct bonded veneers that net $3,000, $3,500 an hour stress free, let the software do the work. If you want to convert more consultations and even hygiene patients to cosmetic or FMR cases, for my three half cases, let the software do the work. It can do wonders or even better, let somebody else do the work. Outsource designs, they're exploding. You can get a wax up or a design done from anywhere from $3 to $50 a unit. In my case, that, or in my opinion, that's a much better way to go, even though I do own multiple softwares, I've invested a lot into this. Um, I, I find it's just better just to send it to someone that's an expert with, uh, with, with whatever software. Uh, Henry Sean has one, Zahn has one. You can even have someone log in in real time and design as you scan. And you can have most of these done in 24 hours. Design, go to sleep, and wake up to the STLs in your inbox. Here's a very popular one here in the United States. Um, I've used a couple of times and designed these crowns, uh, these uh, temporary crowns right here. And trying to evaluate his TMJ, was having TMJ trouble and whatnot. So here's another uh, set. They're all open. It says it right here. We design while you sleep. Overnight service. Full contour design. There are tons of them. You send them to them. I actually have sent three cases today. Tomorrow morning, I'll, I'll show up to work, and they'll be on my printer. That brings me to this. This is... Uh, my favorite way to go, but I recommend to go slow with this. I use a private designer and I installed LogMeIn on my PC and I gave him the password and everything. I've been working with him for years. I trust him. I know him. We spoke on the phone, email many times. I send him the SDLs. He designs and logs into the, to my print, to my uh, printing computer and starts the printers. Sometimes he'll print me uh, just veneers or crowns or, or whatever. Sometimes I'll have two printers going and he'll, and he'll have a model on one and, and restorations on the other. But 
strongly recommend you build a strong relationship with the designer before you give them free range to your computer. All right? Outsource and design format rehabs in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, this is actually out at my uncle. Um, you can send STLs of the pre-ops, preps, photos, measurements of the face, you know, interpupillary distance, uh, inner canine distance, that sort of thing, so they can calibrate the, uh, the uh, smile design software and send that all to them. Uh, place bisacryl after you prep the teeth for the interim, usually without semen, because they're going to get them in 24 to 48 hours. A lot of times, I don't even bother with cement. We'll use immediate dent sealing or place desensitizer, usually immediate dent sealing. Just be careful to not bond the, 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 the bisacryl material to your teeth. But we'll just lock the, the temps on and the undercuts. They're coming back the next day. You come into the office early that morning, post process, clean the prints, cure the prints, uh, prepare the intaglios, and deliver. And it, it's that simple. Before you're going to do something like this, make sure your designer is available. Actually, I kind of made this mistake myself. Um, he was going to visit his mother. I didn't contact him beforehand, just assumed he was there because he's always there and sent him a, a case of design. And two days later, it wasn't on the printer. I picked up the phone, gave him a call, and he was three hours away. So check with him and make sure. But this case was actually done uh, 20 in, or put into temporaries uh, in 24 hours. We deprogrammed him with the approval of a wax up stint. We transferred it with putty stint. Uh, it's 28 units of three quarter and four crowns, delivered them with polycarboxylate cement. Uh, he's a family member and we're going to let it ride. He didn't pay enough for the food. So he's going to let it ride. We're going to go and uh, see how long it lasts. And I like the polycarboxylate cement. You don't have to worry about them coming off, but I don't have to. Worry if I'm on vacation with my wife, my kids, or anything like that, that I'm going to get that phone call. I, you know, these front veneers came off. And it also, it seals so well. It's, it's got antibacterial properties, that sort of thing. It's a little tough to get off, but that's what you want. It's not as hard as an RMGI to get off, but it does the job. Um, he's at two and a half months, and he's going strong. He was having bad TMJ and headache pain. He loves the way they look. He told me to bond them on there permanently. I, I told him, I said, just, just leave them on there until one comes off. We're going we're gonna to see how long it goes. To tell you how good the, the private design services are out there, we had one occlusal adjustment on number 18. There was one interference. Besides that, it was absolute textbook occlusion, perfect everything. Um, in this case, for the wax up and the crown design, it cost me around $250. The permanent crown resin cost me set, what I calculated off the machine, $78.80, plus you know, resin waste that you're always going to wash away. So I've got about 100 bucks tied up in this uh, with the printing. So about $350 for you know a $20,000 full mouth rehab. And then we haven't converted him over to ceramic yet. Again, he's a family member of mine. Um, we'll get to that, but um, I keep measuring his video every time he comes in for a profi, which was about two weeks ago, and I can't find anything that where he's lost any video. Again, it hasn't been that long, but I'm very, 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 very optimistic about this material. Um, another thing that I'm very, uh, the reason I'm excited about it is for the average dentist, some of you guys out there, a, a class two resin is, is a joke. Yeah, it, it's easy to, you can bang them out in you know, 10, 15 minutes, I hear people say. Uh, the average guy, they're still using a tough mine. You've got poor contacts, poor contours, food packs. You, know, you can see here, this is not my patient, by the way. I think I stole this from Google. But uh, there's no contact here, food pack, decay, pretty good likelihood of a root canal. You know, posterior resins for the average DDS can be iatrogenic. Not everybody, not every dentist, and, and, and not most dentists, but you know, the average dentist, we have 
not the best of luck with posterior resins. So why am I so interested in printing resins? I threw four cartridges of this material, this permanent crown material from uh, Form Labs. I've averaged 421 restorations, some of those inlays, onlays, crowns, why not even a few bridges here and there, even though that's not an indication. Uh, so it comes out to about three bucks per unit. Less than sure if it was all inlays, onlays, and that sort of thing. And I saw a Brazilian study in 2013 where the direct resin costs were on average about $8 per tooth to do a direct resin. We all know from 2013 to today, it's a lot more than that. Uh, but anyway, the study show the average dentist takes about 20 to 41 minutes per two to prep and properly restore a posterior uh, interproximal resin, 60 to 90 minutes per quad. Some are faster, some are slower, but I think this is about the range. And do you agree or not? You know, we'll talk about that, that at the end. What do you spend the most time doing, prepping or restoring? Me, it's putting the tooth back together. I'm always spending way more time putting it back together. It would be so great if I could delegate the majority of that out to staff with a comparable or possibly superior material to direct composite resin, uh, something that's cured 95% uh, polymerization rate versus 50, 60, 70%, uh, and have perfect ideal contours, contacts. It's it's for big cases, you know, it's for multiple interproximal caries lesions in the dentin 10 to 16, let's say, you know, and I see a lot of those, like those previous x-rays. Amalgam replacement cases, I love the 3D printing for this. Somebody comes in, they've got a dozen amalgams, they want them out, and, you know, you're taking them out and a cusp tip flies off and that turns into a crown with this, it doesn't. You can, you can print it, you can uh, bond it on there. And it doesn't affect the cost to you or to the patient unless you want to. That's your decision. Um, and another thing that I've noticed, how many patients do you come across in your practice that you restored one quad, two quads, three quads on, and they missed their last appointment? Now they need endo or extractions or something like that because they weren't able to do it all. If you can print, that's the the, the, yeah, the big advantage over milling. And I have a five axis mill, I have a CEREC, I love milling, do it every day. Um, mill everything from you know, dentures to, to bridges to crowns. Matter of fact, whenever I finish this, I've got to go uh, mill several out for a guy for tomorrow. But you know, milling resin blocks is great for a few takes, but not 10, 12, 16 MOD resins. It's just not, uh, time uh, worthy or cost worthy. Printing 12 to 16 MOD resin, if you're looking at, you know, by average fees, $4,800, dollars you're going to use 15 to 30 mils of resin, about 50 bucks worth of resin, what you're going to spend. If you mill it, you're going to use over $500 worth of, of resin blocks. And then the mill time for, let's say, a dozen MODs, it's, it's going to take you a while to mill out a dozen MODs. With this, you can be done by lunch. You prep. You have to learn how to do the prep. That's the hardest part. Do the prep. You scan. You leave. Your assistant, you train your assistants to do the rest. You come back. They've tried them in. They've taken x-rays. And you come in. You prepare the intaglio. And you bond them in. Do you want to have multiple meals? That's something else someone else has brought up to me. You know, get two CEREX, three CEREX meals, four CEREX meals. And I understand that, but you want to have multiple $5,000, $50,000 machines or one single $5,000 printer that can do this for you. That can print out a dozen, 14, 16 MOD, MODL restorations for you, crowns, whatever. But my ultimate goal is a elimination of most matrices. I'm not naive. I know for a single or two or even three MODs, we're not gonna pull out the, the scanner and the printer. We're gonna go direct, but it gives you such ideal contours and contacts and it all but eliminates sensitivity. I'm assuming it's because of the, the C factor being gone. Um, I do immediate didn't seal while the restoration is being printed. This is the first one that I actually ever printed. I removed an amalgam, 
on my wife and, and printed this and bonded it in. Um, I'm currently trying several different scanners and softwares as funds allow to, to try to get this workflow down. I'm working on it uh, as a different webinar. I'm hoping that some of y'all will get kind of inspired by this material and join in and help me and uh, let's connect the dots and make this a reality so that we can all produce good resin inlays, resin restorations for our patients and cut our overhead and uh, delegate more of this to our uh, auxiliaries. Why do I think that this material will work long-term? I do a lot of direct injection cases. I've done many, many, many over the years. They seem to last forever. And I assume you know what I'm talking about with direct injection. Um, I'm sure this is the same case. Uh, I had a wax up done back in 2012, printed it. I got you, I didn't print this. This was, uh, we copied this and did a suck down. He was given six months to live. Uh, had a cancer diagnosis of some type and given six months. And this was him in 2019. This was injective fill or hyperfill, a dual cure direct injected uh, material. And it was just, I was amazed. Uh, it's another young man, uh, another kind of a sad story. Uh, June of 2017, I, I did this case on a moon ray with uh, Next Step MFH. Uh, he had actually tried to commit suicide from bullying at school over the color of his teeth. And this was the top. And then we, you know, of course, did the bottom after we finished the top. And I saw him in August of 2020. They still look great. They still look, they had little signs of wear, not much. Uh, this new resin has much higher properties, uh, wear, much better wear properties, higher flexural strength and everything. But besides where his gums had, teeth had erupted more as he had grown, you couldn't tell anything was wrong. It's just a little gingival stain there. But he was, went from 14 to 17 years old. Uh, why this resin again? It's got 116 or higher uh, megapascals of flexural strength in comparison. One of the more popular direct uh, resins, Venus Diamond, is around 120, depending on what study you look at. Some have it a little higher, but it's a very hard, strong uh, resin. I like it myself. Uh, it can be printed with the marginal accuracy of a mill serac restoration, but the intaglio fit is that of pressed ceramic on a sub $5,000 printer. It can be printed for same day or next day restorations. 42 minutes is about average for four cramps. I, matter of fact, I went back and looked at this. 42 minutes was actually the high end. It's around 39 to 40 minutes for the average for four cramps. Um, this material polishes more easily than any direct resins. It polishes with anything. It, anything that you can, in your office, I mean, the, the simplest stuff, it, it, it'll polish it and shine it. Uh, the one in my mouth, we use uh, three different pumices, and the thing feels better than the zirconia crown I have opposing. Uh, the ceramic filler seems to give it a bit of an opalescence effect, in my opinion. And this was before I started using OptiBlaze. These are just polished uh, veneers. Uh, you achieve a 95% or higher polymerization of the material using heat and high-intensity curing versus 50 to 70% for an indirect resin. $1.79 per cc, and it's radio opaque on the x-ray. Also, why this resin, this is the biggest thing, no hours of mixing. While next in MFH, I've loved, uh, and, and also uh, Envision Tech resins, I, I, I've loved. This material is phenomenal. You don't have to put it in this mixer for 12 hours and whatnot. For any of you out there that are new to 3D printing, that's huge. That is a huge, huge, huge thing that you don't have to worry about it being mixed up. It's always in suspension. Uh, my armamentarium, personally, uh, interoral scanner and email is my main one. Uh, right now, I use the CERAC Omnicam for most of it and send it to NLAB and have the STL uh, export license for my five axis meal, or I can send the STL to my, uh, to my printer. Uh, then I have the Form Labs Form 3B and the Form Labs Form Cure. The minimum armamentarium, uh, the resin comes in shades B1, C2, A2, A3. This is the only one I buy. I can adjust the shade with this B1. 
I can use the C-man. I can, I, there's several different things you can do. Use the Opti Glaze, Opti Killer. I can make this B1 with a little bit of practice look just like any of these. So that's what would be my suggestion. Start with the B1, go from there, play with an Opti Color, Opti Glaze, and play with that. Um, also, minimum arm material, stainless steel build plate. You can purchase that separately or in the kit that comes with, with the uh, permanent crown resin, but you have to have it. This material is only compatible with that, with that platform. Um, form wash, I call this an ancillary ornamentarium. This resin is very different. Um, if you wash it in the form wash, that form wash just became a permanent crown resin form wash. And that's pretty much it. That's good and, you know, and bad in some ways, I guess you could say, I, or a negative or a positive. I, I, it uses up the machine. You, you can't run anything else through it. Um, it do the same with any Tupperware and magnetic stir. You can't wash any other resins in that isopropyl alcohol. The glass particles coat the unit and make it committed to permanent crown resin. Any other resin that you wash in that isopropyl alcohol will be contaminated, likely ruined by the glass particles. You need separate wash systems regardless for biocompatible and non-biocompatible resins. I think for the low cost of the form wash, it's worth it to have one for the permanent crown resin, one for your other biocompatible resins, and one for your non-biocompatible resins. Now, that being said, I call it ancillary because you can get away with the Tupperware and the magnetic stir just as well. Um, I did for a while. Uh, but make sure you have separate washes for all the biocompatible and non-biocompatible resins. Uh, the workflow, the crown prep. Just prep it. Just prep the tape. It's similar to a, a zirconia crown prep. Uh, you want a millimeter of actual wall thickness. You'll set your minimum thickness on your design software or tell your designer to make them a millimeter thick and you know, prep your margins a millimeter thick. You can see right here. Uh, for teens, I will often reduce you know, about a half of a millimeter right to where there's a little bit of enamel left. So I'm bonding to enamel. I'll make the crown a little thicker uh, and then I'll polish the margins back as needed. Uh, Smooth the prep, of course, no sharp edges like this. Chamfer, chamfered shoulder, it really doesn't seem to matter. I, it, the machine prints it, it's that accurate. It, it's amazing to me that a, a sub $5,000 printer is this accurate, but it, it is, and it, it blows me away. Um, you'll knock about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half off of the incisal edge. If you're doing a, a posterior tube, you want to go you know, one and a half to two millimeters, about like your Emacs for the central groove. But I tend to prep these fairly conservatively. I don't prep them as hard as Emacs. It, it, it's more of a zirconia prep for me. Uh, this is my own personal experience I'm going to throw in. Um, this is a crown that my associate prepped on me, number 14. And these margins, I've measured them with the micrometer, and they were 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 all around. And I printed a set of three over here, and I, they printed perfectly. Um, for veneers or interiors, again, I like to print the margins a little thicker than 0 0.5, print a model, polish them down, or polish them down intraorally. I'll have the designer send the STLs, print the models on another printer for cosmetic and full mouth rehab cases. I have successfully printed margins as thin as 0 0.3. I'm just saying that's a crown in my own mouth. It's not recommended by the manufacturer, not by Form Labs. Uh, so go by their thing by, by their indications uh one millimeter margins i'm just giving you my personal experience um the veneer prep they just basically flatten the facial anatomy as if you were going to do uh veneers direct you know about 0 0.2 millimeters of reduction sometimes i do no reduction depending on the shape and the contour of the tooth and whatnot the angulation of them um just tell the patient the teeth are going to feel a little thicker let the software and the designer do the work smooth anatomy uh, out of the tooth or not, scan it, print it, bond it. That's it. Rarely any anesthesia, unless you just got that patient that's super sensitive and can't stand that, that triple zero cord. Sometimes we don't even do any cord. We'll just get along there and, and bond it on there if we're just trying something out. Or if we're, you know, we'll say, 
We're going to make these for you and see if you like them. If you want to, then we'll do them out of ceramic. You know, we, I'm using one of these retraction points for that. Or if you're one of those super artistic guys, you can take these and cut them back and use it as a base scaffold indirectly. Add your, your different flowables or composites or tents and whatnot and bond them in. I'm not that artistic to do that. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, scan with the scanner. The, you, it's your choice of scanner what to, and, and what to do with the STLs. You can outsource the, the design to a professional for you know three to 20, as high as $50 per unit, but they generally run five, seven, ten dollars a unit. Um, 24 hour turnaround with most. In-house design yourself. Uh, it you know is an option if you're proficient in anterior design. In lab with the uh, STL export license, three shape mesh mixer, that sort of thing. Um, it's expensive, it's time consuming. So if you're going to spend that money on it, get ready to spend some time learning that software and learning how to do anterior design. Um, with the veneers again on the model, what I love about it, you can add the tertiary anatomy as needed. You can mark it with a pencil and trim the corners back and and accentuate your uh, your developmental depressions and grooves and whatnot. Uh, you can add some ceramic primer too and uh, put a little opti glaze, opti color on there. They have a nice translucency anyway at the size of ledge, but just a hint of blue and gray, it, it makes it just, it makes it pop. It makes me feel like a, a, a lab tech and like I said, I have average or below average artistic skills. Again, if you're ultra artistic, cut it back, and build it up. All right. This is a case I did uh, last week on a young fella, uh, same day, uh, just trying to get him through school with teeth. I mean, you can see his teeth here. It's a sad story I won't go into uh, abuse and whatnot, neglect from the parents and, and whatnot. So for these cases, I do a lot of biocopy. We'll copy the teeth, we'll then smooth and add and whatnot to, to the decayed areas to get it looking good. I'll admit they're not, not the most aesthetic, aesthetic cases in the world, but they can make a big difference in a kid's life. And on the flip side, they can be very profitable depending on your state's Medicaid uh, fees and the rules and whatnot. You have to check with that with each individual state. And it is a whole lot easier than trying to bond 360 degrees cervical decay. Wrap it around the tooth. I use them a lot like a stainless steel crown with these kids. Um, wrap it like a, a, a stainless steel crown, uh, print the crown, put it on there. For the four my three halves design, let the experts do it. Just take my advice. Unless you are already very proficient at design software, let the ex experts do it. These 28 units on this lady, they cost me 220 bucks for the design and the resin. We bought them October 29th. I talked to her the other day in preparation for this webinar, asked her how she was doing, and uh, she's doing great. She said they're doing great. She loves them, and we're going to leave them as is. Now, when somebody wants veneers now, like the, the mother whose daughter was getting married in two days, you just did the best you can do. You know, I sat there, spent an hour and a half, two hours designing these. I feel like they came out okay. I designed it probably could do way, way, way better, but anyway. Just pick a software that's compatible. If you're going to design yourself, pick one that's compatible with your scanner and learn. Now, when it comes to printing, a few things that I've picked up, the density. Well, not you. Let me back up and go over this. Full wraps. Print with full wraps. You want to name your files but with the patient's initials, their name, and the tooth number. You can highlight it with a Sharpie marker later for identification. Turn the support density up to the maximum to 1.5. You can leave the, the touch point around the same, uh, 0 0.6. Decrease the height above the raft around three. You can play with this setting, but three has given me the most consistent results. Um, overlap your rafts. It saves your resin. It speeds the prints up. Uh, you don't have nearly as many failures. In fact, I've gotten down to where I haven't had a failure in the last... Uh, right at 300 or so crowns that I've printed since doing, uh, you know, uh, turning the density up and reducing the height down to uh, three millimeters. Print crowns as vertical as possible or around a 10 to 20 degree angle. 
facial veneers around a 30 degree angle. But if you reduce the in size at all, print it like a crown with the thickest part down. Just make sure there's no uh, supports on your contacts. It rarely is. If it is, angle the crown a little bit and you should be good. Notice the, the numbers right there on the rafts. Trust me on that. Trust me. These are, again, my crowns printed um, and my name marked with the Sharpie Marker Gardener right there. During the short learning curve, when you first learn to use this material, print two to three sets of restorations. You notice this number seven that's missing. We got we dropped it. My sister dropped it, and I stepped on and helping her look for it. And we had only printed out one set. So we had to sit there and wait another, you know, 30, 40 minutes, and it was toward the end of the day. So print a couple sets at first till everybody gets the workflow down. Really strongly recommend it at first. Don't try to do them same day. Temporize, deliver them later once your team learns a workflow. Uh, washing, this should not take more than five to eight minutes at the most. Um, it's repetitive exposure to the isopropyl alcohol. It's not how long you expose it, it's how many times you expose it. Um, you must have uh, intimate contact with an extra soft toothbrush, paintbrush, pipe cleaner, et cetera, with wet isopropyl alcohol. It's a unique material in three minutes is the maximum recommended exposure time to IPA. Have I gone over that? Yes, many, many times, but I, I haven't noticed any uh, issues, but uh, not by much. I'd say five to six minutes at the most, but still trying to stay below the three minutes. But long-term washing, putting one in, the, in a Tupperware spin thing or into a form uh, wash for 10 minutes, it's not going to do you any good. After about 30 seconds, it's not doing you any good. I started off washing them whenever I was printing them on a, um, on a moon ray, just using the bigger resin dumping it directly in there. I was washing them in denture boxes, just shaking and it worked. First wash, the second wash a little bit clear, the third wash pretty much clear. This is my current protocol just for, for later. Whenever you want to read through this, we'll go ahead and just skip to it and go through the slides. Crowns prior to the one minute run in my form wash. You can easily substitute the isopropyl squirt bottle or have another dirty dip bucket just to get out this excess resin right here, okay? 20 to 30 seconds removes most of the uh, the, the rest. I need to fix that typo there. Uh, these are printed the same day, and that's why they're so full of resin. This was before, and then I put it in the form wash for one minute and after. If you leave, if you have time and you're able to leave these in the printer to drip for about 30 minutes or so, you can usually skip the form wash step and go straight to the first uh, wash. And that is, this is a Rawlings baseball bucket for my son, the 14 year old son, the little athlete I showed at the beginning. Uh, we're always doing a football or baseball or something. I dip it in there, I dip the brush in and I'm uh, focusing on the integrity. A soft toothbrush, scrubbing, a large lab brush. I've even taken a, a, a large soft uh, brush for painting houses and use that. Just make sure you get the integrity clean, okay? A brush, pipe cleaner to remove excess resin. This shows it you know, one at a time, makes it kind of tedious and monotonous to me. I like doing it on the build plate. Uh, it, it tends to work better, it's faster. I've even timed myself, I've timed my assistants doing it. It's faster to do it on the build plate. What I like to do then is I have a set of beakers. I have five beakers and I like to place the crowns in there. I cover them with ice, IPA and I place them in the ultrasonic for 20 to 30 seconds. I swirl it before and I swirl them after. When I, a little side note here, uh, while we are washing, toaster oven up to 150, 175 degrees, turn it off before putting any crowns inside. You don't want to start fire, don't want to burn your office down. You're just warming it up for a faster dry if you're doing same day restoration, okay? The oven's about 120 to 140 degrees. When you put it in, after 10 minutes, it's down, you know, you can see there from my laser thermometer to 109. You can still burn yourself. Be careful. None of this is validated. This is just me giving a little tip to speed things up, okay? But it's not validated by form labs or anyone, okay? Um, but 
the res the, the, the crowns are clean after three to four beakers. And when the IPA is only partially cloudy, you don't have to wash it until it's crystal clear. Once it's cloudy like this, you can take it out, pour the resin, I mean, excuse me, the, the alcohol back into your initial scrub wash. Just keeps replenishing it. And I can teach you how to recover that uh, alcohol and, and, and whatnot later. Um, after you've done that, dry it completely with compressed air. Take compressed air, blow it, blow it hard, blow it dry. And you want to eliminate any shining spots. You want to look inside this intaglio here and see if there's any shining spots and on your contacts also. Whenever they're dry, they'll, be ha they'll have a thin, frosty white coating all over. All right. If you see anything shining, go grab your squirt bottle, grab your brush, go to the sink, scrub them, rinse it again, dry it. It should be gone. It should be frosty white like this. Okay. Again, here it is, washing away any shining spots. Anything's wet, wash it away. <clears throat> you can allow them to dry at air uh, room temperature for about 30 minutes, let all the IPA out. That's the recommended way of doing it. I, I like to speed it up a little bit. If I'm doing the same day with the, with the oven, saves me about 20 minutes or so. But you do create a little bit of a burn and fire hazard there. But we're professionals. I think we can handle most of that. Just be careful with your staff if you're delegating that out. Uh, you, but you want to evaporate any trap, isopropyl alcohol, re-inspect your intaglios for any shining spots. It should be extra frosty after thorough drying. The initial cure, rafts down, margins up. This is where you're getting your high polymerization. 140 degree, 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Finishing, getting off the supports. Guys, anything will work. Your dentist, uh, you cut things every day. Um, acrylic polishers, burrs, uh, diamond disc are what's uh, recommended. Uh, I, we don't really care for those too much because they're so dangerous. Put your finger off with them. But uh, our favorite is the the blue zirconia polish you wear to take the supports down with. I asked my assistant uh, yesterday whenever she was doing something for me. I said, "What do you use to cut the supports off?" She said, "Whatever's close at a five fifty seven burr, a, a lab burr, whatever." Um, you'll find your favorite tool to polish you with. This is the simplest and least expensive method I've found is to use coarse, medium, and flour pumice and a disposable profi cup once the supports and the spots, uh, support spots have been polished flush um, with an acrylic polisher. Just uh, coarse, medium, and flour pumice. That's the, the crown of my mouth, that's what it's polished with, and I'm telling you, it's smooth as glass. The things that work great, Robinson wheel, die shine, uh, anything that'll polish composite, anything that'll polish, uh, that will polish a denture, it works, guys, anything. It's, it's simple, don't overcomplicate. All right, the intaglio, this is where I kind of depart from the guidelines a little bit. Uh, the recommended way of doing it is one and a half bars, blasting with fine uh, 50 micron glass beads. Uh, blasting with glass beads is for surface cleaning only. It's not really for altering the surface texture. It actually compacts the material while cleaning the frost off, which is, is what the manufacturer recommends. Um, You've got to do it in a well-functioning micro cab or an industrial blasting box with safety goggles and whatnot. This, it's not like aluminum oxide getting in your eye. When these little glass particles get in your eye, they can cause some damage, okay? So be careful with that. But it does produce a nice, nice surface. Just be careful with it. It's called peening. After you, if you do use the glass beads, you're, Crowns will need very little polish at all, the external and the, the, the internal, the intaglio. You can see here, um, here's the intaglio that's been peened with glass beads. Here's how it's been sprayed with aluminum oxide. Now, I'm realistic. In America, we have aluminum oxide in our offices, and I, you know, I keep 27 aluminum oxide at, by my zirconia uh, serac thing, and that's usually what it gets hit with. Again, the, re the manufacturer recommends the painting with the, with the glass beads, and it is nice. It's a little slower, but it doesn't create any micro-mechanical retention. Um, I like to see that matte finish. I feel like it's going to you know, create a better bond. 
it doesn't affect the fit at all. It could change the material's properties. Though. I don't know. That's one thing that I don't know. But aluminum oxide, it's found in most dental offices. Um, it's not recommended by the resin manufacturer. It's sharp. It's going to roughen the surface. Is that good or bad? My opinion, if it's a you know, 22 PSI or less, it's, you know, it's going to leave the surface more mechanically retentive. I, I do not know the clinical significance. I wish I did, but I don't. I will tell you this, don't use white aluminum. I mean, you make sure that you use white aluminum oxide. Don't try into black particles or you will have grayish hue to your restorations. Made that mistake. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. After you've polished and, and, and everything, more heat, more intense cure, another 20 minutes, and it's ready to bond. Bonding. I have tried everything almost hoping for a failure. I have not had one yet. It's just as if you were bonding in any indirect recipe. Use a silane primer, use a, a universal adhesive, use a, you know, a separate primer adhesive, whatever you want to use, whatever your, your thing. In my opinion, the MDP technology has kind of equaled the playing field with a lot of these uh, resins and bonds and things. I, you know, I don't know the strengths, I don't have any numbers for you, but I do know that I've put almost a thousand of these things in with these materials right here and others. Uh, and I haven't lost one yet, except for to a Budweiser bottle. Uh, that was it. And I don't really count that one in about three or four good punches to the face too. Um, but use the etching of your resin system, you know, phosphoric acid or whatever. Um, the ideal etching and the use of aluminum oxide or even somebody suggested to me hydrofluoric acid uh, it needs to be investigated, in my opinion. The fit is so intimate that it's not for retention. If you think back to the videos that you saw at the beginning of me trying those crowns on, it, it, you don't, it's not about the fit. It's just about creating a good surface <clears throat> for, to, to bond to. The use of hydrofluoric acid or aluminum oxide is not research. It's just my anecdotal inferences drawn from nearly a thousand units delivered. It's not endorsed by form labs. Shade alterations, I'll, I'll get from B1 to you know, A1, A2 or whatever. I like to use warmed resin or highly filled flowable as the cement. Uh, B1 permanent resin, it's all purchase. If I've got a very dark stump, I'll block it out with white opaque resin prior to scanning. Just take some white opaque flowable and cover the tooth, just like you would uh, for a Nemax crown or something like that. And yeah, it works tremendously. A little trick that I did once, I opened the spacer up to 120 microns and add a little bit of OptiColor in there. If anybody else is familiar with it, it's very, this, a, a very watery material, runs, it's very thin. And I added that to the inside and it really blocked out the undercolor well, but I don't really recommend that. I, it was just kind of me playing. But um, here's a good case right here. This young fella came in, this was the same day case. Um, Couple few root canals, wisdom teeth, some fillings in the back, whatnot. Anyway, um, B1 can easily be converted to A3. We use A4 flowable to deliver these. Uh, B, we took these B1 three quarter crowns. And so that Medicaid didn't say that it was cosmetic. We have rules, you know, that says if it increases the shader value too many shades or whatever, then it's considered cosmetic. Obviously, from the photos, it was restorative, but still, I didn't want to get in trouble, so I followed the rules. And the opti glaze color, you can apply it intraorally, extraorally, whatever. If you're trying to do a same day case for, you know, like I said, I called earlier, just trying to get a kid through high school with tea, um, you can put it on intraorally. To characterize it, the opti glaze color, I tried everything, guys. I bought, I, I don't know how many thousands of dollars worth of different uh, materials. And I can't beat this one. I, you just can't beat it. Now, you do need a 405 nanometer uh, curing light, such as the Ultra Dent Velo. A little blue or gray at the incisal makes it very translucent. In a nutshell, guys, the stuff works. It works. It works well. It's predictable. Uh, here's the inlay. Another young girl. I think it was a beautiful result. So she, she's smiling. This was, we did this uh, right after New Year's. Uh, and this was uh, 
ground I did on my father, actually. Um, and he's a big man, about 280 pound man, six foot five, big guy, heavy bruxer. And, you know, it's uh, admittedly been a month, but it's holding strong. And he said, it feels good. He said, it feels just as smooth as this gold crank. But anywhere the resin composite can be used, you can use this um, with the artistic abilities of the CAD softwares at an average of $3 per crank. 400 units plus per cartridge. Why well, wait to find out? Learn it now. I love the stuff. And like I said, I think it's just the beginning. So, any questions or anything? Absolutely. It looks like most of these came at the beginning. So apologies if you covered them. Uh, do you design your cases or do you outsource the designs? Outsource most of them. If it's a same day case, like I say, uh, a kid getting a kid through high school with teeth, getting them through adolescence with teeth, we'll design in, in house. Um, but the majority of them I send out, it's just uh, for, you know, five, seven, ten dollars a unit. It's just not worth my time. And I'm right. fairly okay at the software and have an assistant who's very good at the software, but even paying her, her her hourly salary to design, I'm still I still come out cheaper paying a designer to sit down and do it. Got a couple of questions asking where do you find or where do you outsource to? I, I have a private designer. I, I, I he's pretty booked. He has some other businesses. As a matter of fact, he's been kind of getting a little slow on me. I think his other little businesses are taking off. But um, I've used uh, all of those that I showed earlier uh, in the presentation. Honestly, you can Google. You can find a, a slew of them, um, and they're all very, very, very good. Try them. I, 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 you know, our Facebook groups, that's where I've, I've learned a lot of my stuff. Uh, there's a one called Dental 3D Printing. Uh, it's a great group, great guys. Uh, they'll help you out. Jump on there and ask, and you'll get the name of somebody. I'm on there running my mouth most of the time, along with uh, uh, along with a lot of other uh, great, great dentists and great guys that are really good at 3D printing. That really helped me with this a lot, and uh, I I would say to look at Facebook groups for digital inputting into the printer. Can you utilize any intraoral scanner? Um, any intraoral scanner that you you can then design us an STL and get an STL from. Such as like with the CEREC, you can use the CEREC, but you have to transfer it to in-lab and you have to have the STO export license. But I don't know, is there a, a scanner that doesn't export an STO? I don't know, uh, you I, tell me. I, really, <laughs> I, mean, no, I, I, I think they all do, an, I think they'll all export an STO. So it, it really comes down to your design software and whatnot. You know, the medics become very popular, um, uh, the Itero, I want to say they all, uh, you know, you can get an STL out of any of those. But that's what I really can't answer because I, I I just have experience with a few of them. Not, but there's so many, they're hitting the market so fast and whatnot that I can't keep up with it. You know, obviously, I can't buy every printer. I mean, a scan, uh, scanner there is out there. Um, I would if my wife would let me, but um, I would be sleeping on the sidewalk more than likely if I did print. I think they'll all give you an STL. Um, how do you get your restorations so nice and white? Do you shade and glaze? Um, polish uh, my assistant's do it, honestly. And uh, then we got, you know, use the OptiGlaze, OptiColor, and we deliver with a lot of uh, B1 uh, floral. Uh, and, and, and also your, your minimum wall thickness. Uh, the, the, the case a few minutes ago, uh, this one right here, I actually printed his crowns at about 0 0.75 millimeters thick. The thicker you make them, the wider they get. The, the, the material is inherently translucent. That's what gives such a nice, pretty uh, in, uh, size of translucency anyway. But if you thin it back, your you know, the color shows through. So if you have to print it, you know, one and a quarter, maybe, you know, maybe one and a half millimeters thick, if, if you can get away with that, you know, depending on the, the shape and whatnot. But 
Yeah, for this young fellow, I do remember I printed those at 0.75 millimeters thick, which was under the manufacturer's recommended, but it was for purposes of, you know, getting the proper shape. Great. Well, we've got a good question here, kind of 3D printing 101. Uh, what do you think is the easiest way for someone to start as an associate in an office with a printer? What could be a first easy case for me to start with? Mm, probably the indirect direct veneers. Um, a design service, scan them, send them in, and then uh, print the, the veneers out and bond them in. I, I'm telling you, it, it's... I feel bad sometimes. It's so little work, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm charging thirty five hundred dollars or so for you know just six or eight of them, and I don't have an hour tied up. In it. I, that's where I would start. That'd be my recommendation. I have a Formlab three that I purchased before the three B was available. Is there a significant difference, or can I use the Formlab three? Um, got to have the 3B. You, um, could be wrong about that, but I'm 99% sure it's got to be the 3B with the stainless steel plate. And make sure you have the stainless steel build plate. You can buy it in a kit. They have a, a you can buy the permanent crown resin, um, just the cartridge or the kit, and it has a stainless steel build plate. But I think you have to upgrade to the, to the 3B. Uh, I was a couple minutes late. What type of resin are you using in the printer? Uh, the form lab uh, uh, permanent crown resin, JB1. So I, I've used A2, B1, but I've been able to make B1 look like A2. And so I'm just going to just order B1. But uh, it's the form lab uh, permanent crown resin. I have a CEREC Prime Scan and a Form Labs printer. If I have my CEREC design case, can it be printed instead of using the CEREC milling machine? If not, what software do you recommend? Um, you would have to export your STLs. You could either look at, honestly, I was into a designer. I would export my STLs to a designer. It's going to save you a lot of money, but if not, if you've got the CEREC, I would look at InLab and then the STL export license. Export from the Prime Scan to InLab, do your design there, and then export the STLs of the crowns, of the, the restorations to the printer. Uh, the other thing you could do is, you know, three shape, um, uh, even mesh mixer. But before I went and dropped several thousand dollars on yeah, software and then the, the the hours and hours and hours you have to spend to learn to use that software. I sent it to a designer. I mean, these guys are unbelievable. Uh, like I say, I sent uh, 40 units probably today to be waxed up and they'll be printed on my printer in the morning. Uh, I have a Sprint Ray Pro. I don't think I can use the Formlabs resin with that particular printer. Any recommendations for Sprint Ray printer resins? Yes, uh, the resin it's in the Sprint Ray and the uh, the Bigo, excuse me, in the Formlabs uh, cartridge is actually uh, Varseo Bigo Varseo Smile uh, Crown resin. I want to say the Sprint Ray is selling this. This was actually the bottle that I got originally back in August. I had four or five of them. As soon as this stuff hit America, I got it and got six or eight bottles of it and started using it on a moon ray, just telling the moon ray that it was MFH. Um, but you can get the Borsea Smile uh, Big O Crown Resin, B-E-G-O, and it's, it's the same material. Uh, are the resin crowns comparable to the strength of zirconia? Um, no, you know, and it depends on how you define strength. That's what interests me about it so much. I, how many zirconia crowns and Emacs crowns do we see snap off of the gum line or premolar or forward, even molars? And yet I do these resin crowns that, as my practice transfer, as in the beginning, as I talked about it, I went from high-end dentistry to, to more uh, lower-end dentistry as I made that transition, not, or I hate to say lower-end dentistry, but, but 
more economical dentistry, I guess, um, I started doing more and more resin crayons. All people could afford uh, after they lost, you know, the, this this large employer here, and they wear down. They don't break. Uh, it, but it, as far as the, the actual strength, the flexural strength numbers in a, in a testing machine, no, there's, there's no comparison to that at all. But functionally, clinically, is it comparable? So far it is. And I think it's actually superior. I, I like the fact that you don't see that washout that, that zirconia tends to do with the, the margins, you know, it, it's such a hard material and whatnot. I, I've got some zirconic crowns in my mouth, but it, I, I think the resin, I think we're going to see a huge change as time goes on. Quick follow up to that one Is the wear comparable, better or worse by how much to zirconia? Uh, the same, about the same. Uh, there, there's studies show. Uh, I encourage you to go on the BEGO website, uh, B E G O, just www. Uh, BEGO or to go, go to Form Labs and uh, read about it and look at their studies that they've done. It, they're mostly simulated studies. Again, this is a new material, but it's very, very promising. I mean, every time I use it, I, I, I get excited. Every time I have a case to do, I, I get excited about it because it just it's, it just gets better and better and better. And like I say, it, it, I haven't had any failures yet with it. Um, and, but the wear from the those studies are showing that, that that it wears the same rate as other dental materials, and you know from my limited uh, you know six months or so seven months of experience, it's zero. I've, I've got several four mile rehab, you know twenty eight units or twenty two units in this material, and I'm measuring their media with the little con meteor thing and whatnot and. It's staying the same. And I'm inspecting them for wear and photographing and whatnot. And they're just not wearing. And it's surprising me. I mean, I love to see these on recall. I love to see these. I'm I'm dying to jump into the inlays and onlays more. I've been focused on the, the crowns more lately. Um or in the beginning, but my ultimate goal is the inlays and onlays. But um it just because the material is really blowing me away. And how well it's it's performing. Time will tell. Ultimately, always does. But I'm very optimistic. Great. And then our last question for the evening: In your opinion, and speaking in general terms, how long could these restorations last compared to milled crowns? What type of milled crowns? Um, I, I'm seeing. I'm thinking five years. You know, in my opinion, we say permanent you know uh, what's we're not permanent all dentistry is temporary a everything you do if you put in an implant if you do an all on six and you know i did all on six yesterday I, I told the lady she was in her 40s and she said this is gonna last forever right i don't know it depends on if you get sick later on in life and, and get on some medications or you know if you go back to smoking again or whatever you know it, it's all temporary but how long will it last? I, you know, I, I don't know. My gut feeling is saying, you know, five to seven years, something like that, similar to milled uh, hybrid ceramic restorations, uh, which to me, you know, I consider a, a permanent restoration. Yes, you can get longer out of other things, but ultimately it comes down to patient hygiene. We all know that. I mean, I've got resin composites that are 16 years old. I did whenever I was green and wet behind the ears that look like I put them in yesterday because the patient takes care of them and some that I put in six months ago and they were like garbage. So it, but the material has the potential to last a very long time. I, I think there is some property, flexural, thermal conductivity, thermal flexural, some some property that we're not seeing that's going to make resin a superior restorative material in the future. And I love lithium disilica. I love zirconia. You know, I'm not knocking either one up, but um, I think this is this material has a chance to really, really, really fit in there. I'm not saying it's going to replace either one of those, but it has a place. Every material has a place. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Not just this material for this, amalgam for this, to resin for this. You know, 
for what patient, for what tooth, for what reason, why are we doing it? Like, that's a long-winded answer, I know, but uh, I think, you know, five, seven years is not unreasonable at all, and the simulated studies kind of back that up. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening, Dr. Gardner. Yeah. If anyone has additional questions about 3D printing or if we were unable to answer one of your questions this evening, please feel free to email us at webinars at henryshine.com and we will connect you with a representative in your area. Additionally, if you're interested in attending future Henry Schein webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. As a thank you for attending tonight, everyone will receive the recording via email sometime in the next week. I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you.